everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the summertime market bag and welcome if you're joining me for the 2023 Marvelous Market Bag Crochet Along. This is week two. If this is your first time hearing about the Crochet Along and you love to make market bags, you'll definitely want to check it out. Uh, during the month of May, we make one new crochet market bag per week so this is week two all the details can be found in the description of this video today we're making this uh, summertime market bag this is a very heavily textured market bag as you can see here we have a variety of crochet stitches we have some fur stitch here some bobble stitch and then as well some open uh, stitches as well these crochet market bags are a good size they're approximately 16 by 18 inches when you lay them flat and uh, they're worked all as one piece from the bottom up to the handles today for the tutorial you're going to need some cotton yarn I'm using a worsted weight cotton yarn this is the 24 7 cotton by lion brand there's about 186 yards per ball you're going to need three different colors. I'll be using two balls of this aqua color for color A, two balls of the ecru color for color B, and then you'll need one more ball of white for your color C. You're also going to need a four millimeter or a G6 crochet hook and a copy of the free written pattern which is on my website at richtexturescrochet.com again the direct link is there for you in the description of this video so thank you so much for joining me while you're here I invite you to subscribe take a look around be sure to check uh, that box so you can receive notifications especially if you want to follow along with this crochet pattern uh, and the upcoming ones in the crochet along and uh, this channel is updated every week with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. So let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Now as I mentioned earlier our bag is worked all as one piece. We're going to start at the bottom using our color A. For this you can either make a magic ring and into your magic ring work 12 double crochet stitches or you can make a slip knot and then chain four and then for round one, you're going to work 11 double crochets into the fourth chain from your hook. Your chain three at the beginning of each round does count as a double crochet stitch. So in this first round, you'll have 12 stitches altogether. So you want to work 11 into that fourth chain. Once you have your 12 stitches, I'm just going to double check, so including the chain 3, 12, I did have one extra there. Once you have a total of 12 stitches, including your chain 3, you're going to join into the top of your chain 3 with a slip stitch. You're then all set to begin round 2. For round 2, you're going to chain 3 work one double crochet into the same stitches joining remember your chain three counts as a stitch you're then going to work two double crochet stitches into each stitch all the way around when you come back to your first stitch which is your chain three join into the top of that first stitch at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 20 four double crochet stitches. For round three, you're going to chain three 
and into your next stitch work two double crochet stitches. Next you're going to work one double crochet into the next stitch followed by two double crochets into your next. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into your next stitch followed by two double crochets into your next all the way around until you come to that starting chain three which is your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of that stitch at the end of your round three you'll have a total of 36 stitches for round four you're going to chain three and work a double crochet into your next stitch you're then going to work two double crochets into your next work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches and two double crochets into your next stitch you're going to repeat that all the way around work one double crochet into each of your next two stitches and then work two double crochets into your next stitch all the way around until you come to your first stitch which is your chain three join in the top of that first stitch with a slip stitch and at the end of this round four you will have a total of 48 stitches for round five you're going to chain three work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches You're then going to work two double crochets into your next stitch. Work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next three stitches followed by two double crochets into your next stitch all the way around until you come to that first stitch which is your chain three join with the slip stitch into the top of that first stitch at the end of this round you'll have a total of 60 stitches For round six, you're going to chain three, work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches, and two double crochets into your next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next four stitches followed by two double crochets into your next stitch all the way around until you come to your first stitch. Join with the slip stitch into the top of that chain three and at the end of this round you'll have a total of 72 stitches. for round seven chain three work one double crochet stitch in each of the next four stitches followed by two double crochets into your next stitch You're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches.
followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next five stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch, all the way around until you come to that starting chain three. Join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch, the starting chain three, and at the end of this round you'll have a total of 84 stitches. For round eight, you're going to chain three, work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches, and work two double crochets into your next stitch. You're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next six stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch, all the way around until you come to that first stitch, which is your starting chain three, slip stitch into the top of that first stitch to join. At the end of this round eight, you'll have a total of 96 stitches. For round nine, you're going to chain three. You're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. And work two double crochets into your next stitch. You're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. Repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch, all the way around until you come to that starting chain three, join with a slip stitch into the top of the starting chain three. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 108 stitches. For round 10, you're going to chain three, work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. Next, you're going to work one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch, all the way around until you come to your starting chain three, join with a slip stitch into the top of your starting chain three. At the end of this round 10, you'll have a total of 120 stitches.
For round 11, you're going to chain three, work one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. You're then going to work two double crochets into your next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch, all the way around until you come to that starting chain three, which is your first stitch, join in the top of that first stitch, and at the end of this round 11, you'll have a total of 100 and 32 stitches. For round 12, you're going to chain three, work one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches. You're then going to work two double crochets into your next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch, all the way around to your starting chain three, which is your first stitch. Join it with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch at the end of this round, you'll have a total of 144 stitches. The end of round 12 marks the end of your increase round, so you have, should have a fairly good size bag bottom worked. We have three more rows to work in our bag bottom, so this is for rows 13, 14, and 15. You're simply going to chain one, single crochet, into that first stitch and then single crochet in each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch, chain one and repeat. So you want to work a total of three rounds for rounds 13, 14 and 15 of single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. At that point you can meet me back here and we will we will begin working the bag sides. At the end of round 15, you'll join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and you can then fasten off your color A. That brings you to the end of the bag 
bottom. You can go ahead and weave in any further ends if you would like. But we're now going to move on to the bag sides. So for the bag sides, for round one, you're going to begin by taking your color B, and I'm using this Acro color, and joining it into your first stitch, which is the same stitch as joining. For these rounds, you will always have 144 stitches. There we go. You're then going to chain one, and for round one of your bag bottom, you're simply going to half double crochet into that first stitch, and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. You're continuing to work in the same direction as you were before. So half double crochet in that first stitch and in each stitch all the way around when you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round one of your bag side, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. And at this time you're going to chain one and turn your work. You will now want the outside, the right side of your work to be facing away from you. So you're looking at this wrong side. For rounds two, three, and four, you're going to work three rounds of loop stitches. To work a loop stitch, it's a little bit tricky and it's the kind of stitch that you're either going to love or you're going to hate. I hope that you're going to love it. <laughs> so what we're going to do to work our first loop stitch is you're going to insert your hook into the first stitch. You're then going to yarn over, but as you yarn over, you're going to wrap the yarn around, I'm wrapping it around my index finger, and you're going to take your hook and grab both strands and pull both strands through. Keeping your finger around this loop, you don't want that loop to pull through. You're then going to remove the loop from your hook. Kind of, I pinch it between my two fingers down below. Pick up the strand that you'll use to yarn over, yarn over, and pull through all the loops on your hook. You'll then look at your other side and you have a loop stitch made. Now just to pull up my other bag, that loop stitch, eventually once you've worked all the rows of them, we're going to cut them and that's what's going to make this little fringe here on your bag. So I'll show you another loop stitch. You're going to work loop stitches in each stitch all the way around when you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. But let's work another loop stitch together. So insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, but before you yarn over, you want to wrap that yarn around your index finger, take your hook, grab a hold of both strands, yarn over, and pull through. You're then going to pinch that loop, kind of hold it back a little bit, remove your finger, yarn over again, and pull through all the loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the next stitch, wrap the yarn around your index finger, yarn over, pulling both strands through but holding back that loop on your finger. Then remove your finger from the loop pinching it gently down below, yarn over, and pull through. It is a little tricky to get used to at first, but once you have the hang of it, it will go much uh, smoothly. So you're going to work loop stitches in each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, and work another round of loop stitches. Do not turn your work until you come to your final round, and then you will turn your work at the end of round four. So go ahead, work three rounds of loop stitches.
at the end of round four, you have joined with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You're going to chain one and then once again turn your work so that the outside of your bag and all of your loop stitches are now facing you. You should have three rounds of loop stitches. Now for round five, you're simply going to single crochet into the same stitches joining and then single crochet in each stitch all the way around. At the end of your round five, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. And we're going to be switching to our color C. At the end of round five, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and fasten off. For round six, you're going to take your color C and join your color C in the same stitches joining just with a slip stitch and then chain one. You're then going to, for round six, work a half double crochet into that first stitch, working with your color C. And then half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round six, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one. Now for round seven, you're going to work in the third loop all the way around and half double crochet in each stitch. To work in your third loop, you're going to look at the back of your half double crochet stitch. So we have the front here facing us. When you turn it over and you look at the back, you're going to see a loop that runs just along under that top back loop. This is your third loop. So you're going to insert your hook into that back loop only. So yarn over, look at the back of your work, insert your hook into the third loop of that same stitches joining, and then into the third loop of each stitch all the way around. Work a half double crochet. I'll work a few more stitches here and you'll see that as you work your half double crochet stitches into your third loops, it's going to push the tops of your stitches forward, which is going to give you this little ridge of texture. So work half double crochets in the third loop all the way around. When you come to that first stitch, join with the slip stitch into the first stitch. At the end of round seven, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You're then going to chain four. This chain four will count as a double crochet for the first three chains, and then a chain one. For round eight, you're going to skip the next stitch and work a double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next. You're going to repeat this all the way around. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Until you come to your first stitch, you'll end with a chain one, skip one, and then you're simply going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the third chain of your starting chain four. At the end of round eight, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the third chain of your starting chain four. You're then going to chain one. For round nine, you're going to work a half double crochet into the same stitches joining, and then a half double crochet into your chain one space. Half double crochet into the next stitch, and half double crochet into the chain one space. You're going to work a half double crochet into each stitch and each chain one space 
all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. For round 10, you're going to chain one. And once again, looking for that third loop at the back of your half double crochet, you're going to half double crochet into the third loop of each stitch all the way around, starting with that same stitch as joining and then into each stitch. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. We're then going to fasten off that color C. So at the end of round 10, you're going to join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You're then going to fasten off your color C. You can then pick up your color A and join with the slip stitch and then you're going to chain one. Now for round 11, Using your color A, you're simply going to single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with the slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. At the end of round 11, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch chain one and you're going to turn your work. Now for round 12, we're going to begin by working a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So there's one, two, and three. You're then going to work a bobble stitch into your next stitch. To work a bobble stitch, yarn over Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops. You're going to do that a total of five times all into the same stitch. So there's one, yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops. There's two, three into the same stitch, four into the same stitch, and five all into the same stitch. You'll then have six loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all six loops. You're then going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches. You're then going to repeat that all the way around. Work a bobble stitch into the next stitch followed by a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Continue all the way around. You're going to finish off with a bobble stitch before you join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. You're then going to chain one and once again, turn your work. At the end of round 12, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round 13, you're going to single crochet into the top of your first stitch, which will be your bobble stitch, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and then at that time you can fasten off your color A and you're going to add your color or join your color C once again. At the end of round 13 you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and you can fasten off your color A. You're then going to go ahead and join your color C and now for rounds 14 
through to 18, you're going to repeat your rounds 6 through to 10. So those were the rounds working in your color C. You're simply going to repeat them once through. At the end of your round 18, you're going to switch to your color B, which was uh, my echo color where I worked these um, loop stitches. Then for rounds 19 through to 36, you're going to repeat your rounds uh, 1 to 18 of the bag sides once more. So that's starting down here with your acro. So go ahead and work the repeat for your color C first, and then you're going to go back with your color B, starting at your round one all the way through to your round 18, work a repeat. Then you're also going to repeat rounds one through to five of the bag sides once more. Uh, at that time, you're then going to switch to color A and meet me back here for the top and handles. If you need to, head over to richtexturescrochet.com and uh, you'll see it all written out there for you to make it a little bit easier to follow along. So work the repeats, meet me back here at that time. Once you have finished all of your bag repeats, so you've worked through to round 41 and you've ended with a repeat of round five. You're, you've now worked, just to give you a little bit more of a reference, you have three stripes of the first stitch and four of these um, open stitches and then two rounds of the bobble stitches just to give you reference for how many repeats you've worked. You're then going to have ended on a round five. You can fasten off and weave in your ends for your color B. And I've already done it on this piece here, but I have another one here. What you're then going to do, or you can wait, leave it until the end, it's up to you, is to give your loops more of a fur fringe look. What you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and you're simply going to cut through the tips of the loops and you're going to do that for every single one of your loop stitches and uh, all the way around your bag and then it's going to eventually once you comb it all down going to give you this really neat faux fur look so once you've done that and you've finished your repeats we're then ready to start the top of the bag and the handles. So you're going to, once again, take your color A and you're going to join it with a slip stitch into the same stitch as joining and chain one. You can have your right side facing you. You're then going to, for the first two rounds, work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around in your color A. So one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one and repeat. You'll do this for rounds one and two of the bag top and handles. At the end of round two, You've joined with a slip stitch into your first stitch. You can chain one. You're now ready to begin the handles of your bag. For round three, you're going to single crochet into the same stitch as joining, and then single crochet into each of the next 37 stitches. So you'll want 38 single crochet altogether. Once you have 38 single crochet, you're then going to chain 50. You'll want to keep these chains fairly loose because you may be working or you will be working into them later on. So chain 50. There 
there's 20. Thirty, and forty, and fifty. One more note, so this chain fifty is going to form the bag handle itself. If you would like to adjust the length of this handle, you're welcome to also. Uh, just make note of it so that you can work the same number of chains on the other side. Now without twisting, you want to skip the next 34 stitches. I've already counted out 34 stitches here. Uh, so you're going to skip the next 34 stitches and then into your next stitch you're going to work a single crochet. I've lost my chain, so I'm going to pick it up again. You're going to single crochet into that next stitch, and then once again into each of the next 37 stitches. So again, you'll have a total of 38 single crochet stitches at this point. After you've worked your next 38 single crochet stitches, you're ready to work the other bag handle. So once again, you're going to chain 50, or the number that you chained uh, to begin with. There's 10. twenty. Thirty, forty, and fifty. Once you have your fifty chains worked, you're going to skip the next thirty four stitches, which should bring you over across here to your first stitch. When you come to that first stitch, you're simply going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. You are now in the home stretch for your summertime market bag. Now for the next five rounds, so four, five, six, seven, and eight, you're going to chain one and single crochet in each stitch all the way around. That includes the uh, long chain stitches. So when you come to your chain stitches you will be working directly into them. I'll single crochet all the way across. If you are finding it uh, very difficult or really don't like working into your chain stitches, you can simply work the uh, 50 stitches into the chain space. Uh, it's up to you. I'm going to work mine directly into the chain, which I'll show you when I come across here. So when you come to your chain, again, you can either just work 50 single crochet into that space, or as I'm going to do here, simply single crochet into each stitch. It is a little bit tedious, but I do like uh, how it kind of makes the stitches a little bit tighter and more evenly spaced. 
a just single crochet in each across. When you come all the way around, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one and repeat. In total, you will want five rounds of single crochet stitches. At the end of that time, you're going to fasten off, weave in your ends, and your summertime market bag is then complete. So that's all there is. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, once again, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and again, join me uh, next week for another market bag crochet along in the 2023 Marvelous Market Bag Crochet Along. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.